Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BWG Game Club. We are back with season three. We're back, <laughs> We're back bitches. <laughs> I'm your host, Peter, with my friends, Johnny Bag of Donuts. Hey, guys. And the dark-skinned Zephyrath. <laughs> hey, I thought you were going to go light skin to child. I'm wearing my Wakanda Wu Tang shirt oh, today. Man. You know what I'm saying? Missed but, opportunity. Every, everyone out there, just so you know, Pete uh, is a little embarrassed to, to say his own little nickname that he has going on here, but uh, he is Peter, Mr. Showbiz. Hold it. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope you know that. I hope you know that. They're going to try to get that to stick. It's up to you guys to not let it. Mr. Show. <laughs> what is the BWG Game Club? It is a podcast where we pick a game. We play a section of it week by week. And each week, we get together and talk about that section. We have done this for two games already. That was Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes, and Deadly Premonition. We are now in season three, and this time around, we are playing Spec Ops The Line. Oh, hold the line! <laughs> this is a narrative-driven military shooter that was developed by Jaeger and published by 2K. It launched back in 2012, June 2012, I believe. It received mostly positive reviews. For its gameplay, but what really caught everybody were its dark tones, its dark themes, and its subtle mechanics on the change in tone as you progress through the story. We're excited to play it. I have played it once, I'll let you know, but John and Devon have not played this game at all. This is their first time in. So for our first episode, we're going to go through the section that we played. But we're also going to go into a little deeper dive because we got to talk about some characters, the music the storyline so far, we'll take some breaks to discuss all of those aspects of the game. We had to play to the end of chapter four for our first episode in this season. In broad terms, let the people know what you thought about this first section and how you feel to be playing Spec Ops The Line. Uncharted? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I, uh, it's good so far. It's more of a casual shooter, I'll say. This is a linear it, shooter. Yeah, is what yeah. You're trying it's to say. it's yeah. like it's like just like it's very just. I would say it's your it's your run of the mill, you know, third person cover right. shooter. Right. Yep. Nothing it doesn't try to do anything too fancy. Nope. Overall, I I enjoyed what I played. Looking yeah. forward to playing more. All right. Wow. And that's the podcast, everybody. All right. <laughs> we'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to agree with you guys. I enjoyed jumping back into this one. It took me a little bit to get used to the controls, not going to lie, just because third-person shooters have definitely evolved throughout the years. So going back to this one, which released over seven years ago, there were definitely some control decisions that confused me. But Mm -hmm. I still had fun with it, and it was nice to return. I actually don't remember... A whole lot. I do remember how the story turns out, but I don't remember a whole lot from the game itself. Playing through it again, I had fun. It was like going through it for the first time almost. It was more like recollecting everything as I played through it. Mm -hmm. Are you guys ready to dive into the story? I am ready. Okay. We're at the main menu. There's an upside down American flag, and it looks like you're in a desert. You might not know where you are, and all of a sudden, you just hear Jimi Hendrix Star Spangled Banner Mm -hmm. playing over a radio. A helicopter zooms on by, and you can hear the guys on board arguing with each other. This This intro section, we are in control of the turret that's on the side of the helicopter, the minigun, whatever weapon it is up there. Basically, it shoots a lot of bullets at a really high rate, and you just destroy all the enemy helicopters coming your way. Shit caught me off guard hard, body. That's what I want to ask you guys. When this thing started off, what were you thinking? I said, holy shit, what the fuck's going on? 
I had no idea what was happening. I was like, okay, I guess I got to shoot these things. It's really cool, too, because at the same time, the credits are coming in while you're playing the section. So it's a true intro section. But the game just kind of throws you in there right away. Yeah, I like the the jump to it. It was cool. It was nice. I unfortunately had holdover control issues from our previous game, Deadly Premonition, <laughs> where my up is left and my <laughs> my right is down. And uh, so immediately I tried to aim at these helicopters and my guy's just like... <laughs> up and i'm like what the fuck is going on <laughs> and then i start moving it like left and it goes down i go oh no this game oh, is just forever haunting you so deadly kinda... premonition was not letting you go that easily <laughs> it kind of ruined the surprise don't want to go <laughs> it kind of ruined the surprise a little bit for it but um ultimately it was, it's a cool way to begin the game though they had some great parts in in this intersection. Like one of the helicopters, it slows down as you're shooting at it, and the helicopter just slams into a crane. Yeah. And you're like, "Yeah, I like that." that. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they're dead, yo, <yeah>! America! <laughs> a big thing that happens is in the middle of you shooting at these helicopters is a sandstorm begins, <laughs> which probably means we're in a place. I'm just thinking the song. Sandstorm <laughs> from Dark. <laughs> Sandstorm <laughs> begins. <laughs> Can someone please edit that? Where it's like, there's a sandstorm coming. It's like, <laughs> that was awesome. Oh. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Sandstorm by Darude kicks in. <laughs> and you have to fight your way through it. Visibility starts to get very poor. An actual sandstorm comes in, not just the song. <laughs> the, the real sandstorm comes in as well. This probably means that you're going to run into more sandstorms as the game progresses. This is you not mean, the only time you'll see a sandstorm. Yeah, I don't think you're lying. While this ramps up the intensity, one of the helicopters loses its tail and starts spinning around and then flies right into your helicopter. Screen goes black. Mm. We get the words earlier on the screen and we flash backward to a previous time setting in the game. We start to learn what we're trying to do here. Our main character is talking about this soldier named John Conrad. Is John Conrad the greatest man I ever served with? Well, I don't know. There was this one time in Kabul when he dragged my bleeding carcass half a mile to an evac chopper. So maybe I'm biased. But the facts don't lie. The man's a fucking hero. Remember when the first storms hit Dubai? You're probably all safe and sound at home watching TV. Well, Conrad was leading the damn 33rd out of Afghanistan. Instead of coming home, he volunteered his entire battalion to help with the evac. But all you did was send a check. Rumor is Conrad was ordered to abandon the city. He defied that order, and the 33rd stood with him. Now, the official story's still hazy, but what happened next? All we know for sure is that the storms got worse. Much worse. Last thing we heard out of Dubai was that Conrad was leading a caravan of survivors out of the city. That was six months ago. Then, two weeks ago, we picked up this transmission. This is Colonel John Conrad, United States Army. Has the evacuation of Dubai and it is And we get our title, boys. Spec Ops The Line. I'm just going to ask you guys, what do you think about the story? What were, what were some of your thoughts going through your head after that little cutscene? A little intrigued, because you're like, okay, and you're hearing about this soldier, all this stuff. It makes you, well, it makes me want to know more about what's going on, at least. You know, I'm like, okay, well, that's, it's definitely interesting, because, you know, six months has passed, you're like, okay. What's going on? Well, uh, tell me about it. I want to know what's happening. What's what's going on with the story? I, I need to know. It felt very much like a 
a war version of like a very sci-fi trope i feel like where it's like ship has gone offline you know it's been disappeared and then you mm. get like an emergency beacon from and you don't know what's going on and you need to <laughs> you know you need to go investigate and see what it is so it was kind of cool they they took that kind of thing which is my favorite thing i love that so much <laughs> <laughs> in sci-fi movies but um so i was like okay cool i was like i'm i'm down for this get a little uh intrigue and see where see what we're gonna find so john you were already feeling the story yeah right from the get-go you're like okay yeah. i'm in yeah. for this ride Come I, I love the things like that it's just like ooh, we don't know what happened and there's a team going in and they're gonna find out that someone's probably fucking crazy or something <laughs> After the title screen, we move into the next cutscene, and there are three soldiers walking through. Hey, guess what? Another sandstorm. Hey. <laughs> this is actually a really cool looking visual scene here. Yes. Them walking. It's like a contrast of them like walking in the sand with the, the background. You see like them silhouetted. I do have to say that this game has some very impressive shots. And it's also really cool that some reveals are done by you, the player. And what I mean by that is when you're walking into a new area, the camera, depending on how you have the camera, it will mm -hmm. show you the landscape. And you actually feel like you're creating that, that really cool frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We start to learn a little bit about our three protagonists during this cutscene. We have Captain Walker. We have First Lieutenant Adams. And Staff Sergeant Lugo. Hey, Cap. Captain Walker. What is it, Lugo? Got a situation, sir. Mission critical? No, sir. Then take it up the chain, Sergeant. Roger that. Lieutenant Adams. I hear you, Sergeant. What's your status? Status is chafed, sir. You say chafed, Sergeant? Yes, sir. A local airborne insurgency has infiltrated the U.S. zone designated as my pants. Sir, <laughs> shut up, jackass. Guys, after this opening dialogue, what did you yeah. think of our characters? What do you think of our main characters? Bunch of assholes. I love it. <laughs> love it. Lugos. Well, really, Lugos the asshole. <laughs> I love it, dude. But he's good. He's good. I liked him. I like the, the humor, camaraderie already. You can tell that they've been together for a while. So I'm here for it. I need more. I, I think it's the perfect setup in the most minimal amount of time you get a a very good insight to how these guys operate yep. not only by like their own personality but with each other I like the special guest too there's a little mm -hmm. special guest and the credits even name a special guest at the top <laughs> whoever's playing whatever your name is on the Shot. platform that you're playing it puts your name right there which is actually a really cool feature yeah. very cool feature and it, may I, it come... caught me off guard i was like oh hey look at that <laughs> <laughs> I do want to agree with what you said, John. It was a great way of showing their personalities. It shows that Lugo is a jokester. Mm -hmm. It shows that Captain Walker, he fits the leadership role very well. Whereas Adams is very objective focused. Facts. After the cutscene is over, we get our first taste of gameplay. We have to move and we have to learn how to take cover behind our favorite walls in third-person shooters, it's the chest-high walls. Oh, yeah. Hey. Yep. There are lots of these, as well as just full-size walls that we'll be hiding behind. Controls in the beginning, for me, were a little wonky. I, I noticed that you had a little wonky time with the, like, how you, you well, you, you pressed B, but you weren't close enough to it to vault over it. I was not used to that, pressing yeah. B vault. These are very Gears-esque controls. It's also very weird to have your vault. And when we say vault, it's jumping over the obstacle that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. It's very weird that your melee button is the yes. same button Correct. as your vault yeah. button. It's exactly. just very awkward. Yes. I feel like they should have followed gears even further by having the button that you use to get behind cover as the yep. same button to vault over as long as you push up on the analog stick. Yep, right. I agree. Exactly. I agree. And right. the thing is, though, right there that's the, the disappointing thing, is that, like, it's not like this came out before Gears, and Gears just, like, iterated on it. It's like, right. the, 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 the fucking, the roadmap was there. <laughs> you know, you right. could have just easily copied it. You just know? implemented it into your game. It would have been just easy enough. At the same time, while we're learning the controls, we get a landscape shot of Dubai. 
you can tell that the sandstorms have torn this place. Darude has gone to town in this <laughs> area. What did you guys think of the setting? Not a landscape that I'm used to playing in most games, right? I think Uncharted 3 was like the only other one where it was like like this. And it was just that section landscape. of the game that you were in the desert. Yeah, Correct, right. exactly. Yeah. So this, you're, you're, I'm assuming you're going to be playing through this whole landscape throughout the whole game. So down for it. I'm here for it. I like it. It's a little different. Puts a little bit more urgency on things, especially in the beginning of the game, you're flying through a sandstorm. I feel like the sandstorm is going to put a lot of urgency on some of the stuff that you're going to have to do if there's more than one. But I like it. I like it so far. Yeah, I agree with Devon that it's a, a change to the usual landscapes that you fight in. And I will say that color-wise, like a lot of it looks the same. So it's it's kind of drab and, you know, it's very sand-like. Everything around is pretty much, you know, a tan colored or with like a uh, silver silver lining with either with cars or you know buildings in the background so not a lot of like color pop but with that being said i think they do actually switch up the environments enough to not make it feel like you're just going through the same recycled areas or anything like that and that's just the first hour it felt pretty varied with that so i was that was a pleasant little pleasant surprise with this environment it's also cool because when you think of dubai you think of one of the most advanced cities in the yeah. world that place is filled with people Mm-hmm. And when you come into it in this game, you still see that beautiful skyline, but you see the abandoned cars, you see the wrecks that the sandstorms have caused. It's a cool way of showing a majestic city. You rappel down from the upper level onto the highway, you walk through a bunch of cars. Right now, the game's still just showing you the environment. You're getting used to the walking controls, vaulting over different objects. They progress a little further. And they find where the transmission was coming from. They look around the area, and Adams sees blood coming from a Humvee. Evacuation. Yep, this is what we're looking for. Whatever it is. Failure. What's that supposed to be? It's a distress beacon, but it ain't military. Someone built this out of spare parts. Any idea who? No, not a fucking clue. God damn it. Walker, you better come see this. Oh, fuck. That's putting it lightly. Body looks fresh. It is. Even worse, he's 33rd. Who did this? Probably the same people been ghosting us. Well, that doesn't answer the question. Don't worry. I think we're about to find out. He lifts up the tarp that's covering the Humvee, and a body falls out. Not just any body, it's an American body. It's a soldier from the damned 33rd. As they're looking at the body, insurgents show up behind them. Walker, Adams, and Lugo immediately take cover, and these insurgents do not look friendly at all. They're aiming weapons at you, and their tone is very hostile. Lugo tries to talk to them in Farsi, while Adams and Walker try to decide what they can do with the situation. Because it's probably going to go south. They're not wrong, and Adams recommends to Walker push comes to shove shoot out the window might give us an advantage up above the insurgents there's a bus with tons of sand in it and you can see sand pouring out of the holes in the window you shoot the windows you can make the sand drop huh foolproof plan I imagine you guys waited to see how the scene played out you guys didn't just start firing right away I did wait no I fired right away did you fire right away yeah. <laughs> hey. I forget what else they said. They said kill those two, and I think more people started sneaking up, and that's when I was like, fuck it. Ah. Gotcha. No, they gave me the red target. I was like, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> the sand pours through the broken window, kills the guys, and we are now in a firefight. Guys, what do you think of the shooting controls? It just reminds me more of Gears, the shooting, and I feel like you run out of ammo so quick. There were so many times I found myself running out of ammo. Ammo was a big weapons. problem with me in this, in yes. this game. Yes. I kept running out, which I don't know if that's the purpose. They want you to keep picking up stuff, but they like there's a section later on that I kind of got fucked with the ammo. They definitely right. do want you to just pick up weapons. Yeah. Right. Because enemies will always drop their weapon. You can always pick it up after. Also, as we learn a little bit farther into this firefight, you can execute enemies who are not completely mm. dead. Yep. 
if you execute an enemy, you get ammo. Oh. For that gun that you have? Yep, for the gun that you have. Uh, uh. Yeah, the, the the shooting controls were fine. I actually bumped down the um, sensitivity because I felt like I was very much going like too hard left and right. I mean, there's nothing super terrible about it, but they do feel like a little loose. Like, and, and it's more of like the, I think the moving controls rather than the shooting, but it still just feels like, I, and I don't know what it is. It just doesn't feel as tight as it could be. I don't know. Especially coming off like we just played Gears 5. And right. not that I think Gears is like an awesome game or anything, but when it comes to, you know, third person cover shooters, it does what it does pretty well. It defined a genre. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, maybe if, maybe if we didn't come off so fresh from that, it wouldn't feel as undercooked but it just again it i didn't feel i was never like oh my god i'm so annoyed but like it just felt like it could have been a little bit tighter in the controls in this firefight you also learn that you can command your soldiers you can command lugo and adams to aim at a target i like that that was cool same it's very easy yeah. and quick to do so yeah, you don't feel massive. overwhelmed yeah you don't feel overwhelmed by having the by having the ability to command your soldiers. I know that there are games that you can play where they give you commands and it's like, oh, well, I'll send them to this wall to mm -hmm. hide here, to right. move forward, to shoot this guy. And right. that can just take forever and take you out of the immersion. Yeah, I, I saw the, on the controls, I had the command button for the squad. And I was like, ugh. I was like, I don't want to do anything like that. But this was pretty easy. Just hold down the RB button and you can target a person and they highlight red. So you know you're on that person and just release and they'll pretty much take care of it. Right. I want to say about learning about the execute, your dude did a different execute than mine did. There are different types of execution. Are they? Okay. Yep. Is it dependent on how he's feeling at that moment or how far you're looking down or anything or no? <laughs> I'm not sure what cues it up. There's one where he boots him in the face. And There's one the where he slams him with the gun. There's one where he shoots him in the head. There's one where oh. he punches him. I did the execution throughout this whole section. Depending on who I was doing it to, I was like justifying it in my own head differently. If that makes <laughs> oh, any sense. I know what you mean. I know what you okay. mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we can when it, when we hit when we hit it later, I can kind of go back into it. But I was like, cool. I like it, there's nothing in the game that makes you have to think like that but for some reason in my own brain i was like i for me to feel better about it i <laughs> thought about it as a different way but <laughs> oh stick around to hear more about that in between the firefight we hear a transmission mayday mayday this is alpha patrol requesting immediate assistance is anyone out there Alpha, if you can hear me, we're approaching your position. Oh, fuck. Thank fucking Christ. I, I think Mars is dead. Are you hurt? Is anyone else with you? There's four of us. We're okay, but we're running out of ammo. You can't keep them back for much longer. Okay, stay cool. We're almost there. Soldiers from the damn 33rd are under attack. So our squad decides we need to go help them out. Delta Force. <laughs> Away. Oh, <wow. laughs> we come to a new setting. There's a plane that crashed. It didn't just crash. It's been there. But a crash plane in the desert. It seems that the Dam 33rd had taken up shelter in that plane. But now they are under attack. And we have to fight our way to those soldiers. This area teaches us about silencers. You can equip your silencer. And you can kill enemies. And they will not know. You are there. Guys, did you like the silencer you, feature? I don't know why you would never not use the silencer. Right. They um, sound cool. They look so cool. So now, they, they caught me, like, right away. They'll catch you at a certain portion. Right when okay. you get close enough to the airplane, they'll automatically yeah, they say, you're there, and then they'll come out. <laughs> uh, they caught me at that, like, when I was walking down the hill. Like, after I killed the guys on the hill, they, they were like, my, there he is! Um, I will say that's one thing I noticed in this game is that 
they do the thing a lot of where scripted events happen, but they try to make it look like you triggered it by yes. by accident. But it's like maybe back in 2012, I would have fallen for that. But at this point, I'm a well seasoned gamer. Like, uh, it just it kind of feels a little weird. Yeah, John, this game is a classic third person shooter. There are tons of scripted <laughs> events. Yeah, it's gonna happen Love it. throughout the game. Oh no, no, it's fine. It, it's just like, but like, where, where Devon was saying, you know, uh, are you saying there's a portion where they finally are just like, oh, you're there. Like, that's a perfect uh, example of like, you could totally be super stealthy, and it's still it'll be at that point where they say like you're there, but it, they make it look like you fucked up and did right. something wrong. Yeah, but it's like, yeah. The way I played it. I was able to kill everybody that I could see with the silencer mm-hmm. and nobody was shooting at me. But the moment I moved up to that chest high wall, that yeah. certain <laughs> chest Weird. high wall right beyond the trigger, all of a sudden <laughs> they all ran out on top of the plane and we're like, they're there. <laughs> I feel like we played a game just like that. We head on into the plane. This was my favorite spot because this is where I died first. <laughs> <laughs> I got absolutely demolished by the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> this dude wrecked me. Bro. Absolutely wrecked my whole life. Because this is where I said I had a problem with the ammo. I had already ran out of M4 ammo at this point. And I'm like, well, I don't want to pick up another gun because what if I run into, you know, a- right. like ammo or like if they have ammo boxes? I'm like, no, I'm going to hold on to it. I missed like four shots with the pistol, dude, and got absolutely savaged. <laughs> this dude did not miss one shot. At all. And I was like, well, okay, that's my first. I died probably six or seven times throughout this playthrough. Damn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I wrecked all due to not having ammo. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say two things about that, Devon. You'll always hear your teammates yell, Watch it, shotgun are coming in! Because the, the guys wielding the shotguns will, as they did to Devon, wreck your day. Fact. If they get close up to you, just consider yourself done. <laughs> you, like, you're dying if they get in close. I'd be hiding behind a wall, and I'd hear them say "shotgunner," and I would just hold RB and be and look around because <laughs> it'll highlight where the enemies are when you're holding the right bumper. Uh, oh, Pete's little hack there. Hey, hey. it'll highlight the enemies That's as long as you like, as long as you're hovering over them. Yeah, and I'll just I'll look for the guy with the shotgun and say, "Take him out." kill him all your fire on that guy (laughs) i didn't use that until like later in the game or Mm -hmm. later in the section i I started using it more oh yeah no right here i just shot him because i was a boss and he couldn't (laughs) stand up to me (laughs) this is where i first switched uh switched to i think i picked up an uzi because i had already run out of m4 and i was just started shooting people with my pistol and I was like, fuck this. I was like, if I'm going to be shooting with a pistol, I'm, I'm picking up the Uzi. And then I, it was actually fun. I will things. say, yeah. I think what this game does a great job of, a lot of the guns have different specialties to them. So the AK does automatic fire and burst fire, because mm-hmm. I did pack, pick up an AK. The Uzi, you can equip a silencer on it. There's some gu- guns with grenade launchers. So there's definitely a variety of weapons in the game. And I do like that. Thank you for bringing that up, Devon. I did not say that when I brought up the silencers. The reason why you can equip a silencer with your M4 is because that's the M4's secondary fire option. Pretty much every weapon you can get has a secondary fire option, but they're not all silencers. Like Devon said, some have grenade launchers, some have different rates of fire, and so on and so forth. So definitely a cool feature. It's funny because when I picked up the AK, I was like, oh, I'm going to put the silencer on. And I fucking, I thought he put it on. I was just like, brr, brr. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Dude, was it bursting? And then I saw it. Dude, I saw it toggle. I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty neat. Yeah. But now I got to kill all these guys. Great. The other thing that I want to say, because I said I wanted to bring up two things about this, Devon. One was the shotgunners. The other was your health and enemy health. Oh. Enemies die pretty quickly. Yep. You shoot them with a couple bullets, they're going to die. It's right. not like they, right. you know, they Bullet soak punches. up ammo. But also, you will die pretty quickly. Right. And I imagine we're all playing on normal difficulty. Yes. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about the health? Because, like I said, you can die 
pretty quickly if you just find yourself out there in the open. Like I said, I died about seven times throughout this playthrough, man, <laughs> so far. It was, it's not a forgiving game. It is not forgiving. Especially, there's one part later on in this in this playthrough, and I'll get, like, I'll when we get to that part, I'll obviously tell you when that part was. But I thought, I was like, you know what? I'm going to melee these dudes. Screw it. Yeah, man, that backfired real quick, <laughs> real fast. Did not work out in my favor. But, you know, your health, it does go very, very quickly. Yeah. I kind of like that, though. No, that's I feel good. like it makes you more tactical in, yeah. in the game. It forces they do you the... to take cover. Yes. yes. And that's what I was going to say is that, like, I definitely hug, hugged walls as much as possible. And it does, like, the, the Halo, you know, recharge health where you know you take they wipe the damage. jelly off their face yes <laughs> and then uh, you regain regain your health back and everything yeah that is the health there's no med kits or anything like that basically you get shot your screen gets a little darker you see red jelly form mm -hmm. on the sides and mm -hmm. if you just wait a little bit they'll wipe away the jelly and your guy will be a-okay so let me ask you a question do you is it the headshots that trigger the yes slow motion i was just yes. about to say that yes okay Yes, so there are little slow motion areas if you get a perfect kill or a perfect grenade. It all depends on how you're killing the enemy. So let's say you kill a group of them with a grenade. It's going to slow down for a little bit and show you that explosion. Mm -hmm. If you shoot them in the head, it's going to show their head fly back and blood just splurt up. We fight our way through the plane, and we make it to where the 33rd is being held hostage. We see one of the insurgents pull out a pistol and shoot one of the damned 33rd in the head. That guy is gone. We're not talking to him. Dead. No, fact, he's <laughs> gone. Dude got eliminated. That dude got deleted. <laughs> Fucking deleted. There's still one more, but the insurgents know you're hiding on the other side of the doorway. Stand back. I kill him. Shit. Got a hostage situation. All right, calm down and let him go. Don't come any closer. Hurry up, Walker. And act fast, Walker, or he's dead. I immediately shot the dude that had the pistol. Same here. They all went down. And guess what, boys? We saved, quote unquote, saved this soldier. Walker runs over to the soldier. Turns out we didn't really save him. That yeah. man is on his way to death's door. But he does tell us a little something before he opens it. <laughs> What? Did you like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a good one. That was a good one. You're going to have to talk fast, boss. He's fading. We're here to help. Just stay with me, all right? Forget me. They took McPherson. You got to find him. We will, but I need you to tell me where they took him. <laughs> they took him to the nest. 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 All right, good. And what about Conrad? Is he still alive? God damn it. Lugo, mark the bodies on tech. Adams, check outside for tracks. Turns out the insurgents have McPherson, another member of the damn 33rd. They took him as a hostage. Guess what is in store for Delta Force now? Gotta save him. Not to argue, but this ain't exactly within our mission parameters. Yeah, well, our mission went from recon to rescue the minute we found U.S. soldiers butchered. Fucking orders. I like it. Orders ain't worth following if it means leaving people to die, Lugo. Conrad's still alive. I think he is. I know he'd agree with me. Tracks end here. Guess this is the nest. Yeah, it's quaint. Very post-apocalyptic. Do they show them sweating in this game? Because I feel like, bro, if I'm wearing all that in the desert with the sun, the sun pounding down, I'm dying. <laughs> they got a brother out there. I'd be dying, dude. I'm done. I'm already. I'm. I'm at least ninety-two pounds at this point. <laughs> I think they're all sweaty. You just can't see because it's everywhere. Oh my god, <laughs> it's gross. I'm hot just looking at them. The squad follows the tracks to what's known as the nest. The nest is where they're holding McPherson. This is where we enter chapter two. Hey. Woo! Already, boys. Already. <laughs> Chapters go quick in this one. 
That's what I say. Did you guys pick up uh, the intelligence yes. stuff? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Did. There <laughs> are collectibles in this game. I picked up a good chunk of them from my previous playthrough. However, I did not pick up this one. Oh, I missed one. I missed one. Fucking mad I missed one. <laughs> How <sighs> angry does that make you in a video game? <laughs> When you pick up a collectible and it says one of two, or it says picked up second collectible, yeah. like second of this many, and you're like, you're like right. damn it, I missed the first one. <laughs> yeah. Right. It makes you want to load it back. Exactly. Like, Fuck. Well, they, it's cool because like the, um, the intel you pick up has uh, narrated yes. you know, portions in it. And it kind of gives a little bit of background on some things. I feel like that's stuff that we are either about to experience or maybe down the line. Like, I, th- uh, I don't think it's, I think it's the next one. Cause we're going into the, the new s- station. I was listening to it and I was like, that sounds like Jake Busey. And I actually looked up and I was like, it's fucking Jake Busey. I was like, that's crazy. Oh damn. Like, that's really? So awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Did you look Pretty up cool. the cast of this at all? Do you know who, who the people are? Uh, I know who the main guy is. I know who Walker is. Adams is kid from Kid and Play. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then um, Lugo is, I forget the guy's name, but he's been in a bunch of things. He was the uh, the, the taxi driver guy in uh, American Gods. I don't know if you yes. They got, they got some people in here. In this area, in Chapter 2, we're fighting our way into a news station. We come across a couple firsts in this firefight. One of them, Lyson Music. Yep. Did you guys know what song was playing when you heard it? No. no? Oh, come on, uh, man. I forget what played, but I did recognize the music that was playing. It's Hush, mm. Deep Purple. Mm. Hush, hush. Yeah. <laughs> the, the music, it's, a, it's your stereotypical war movie stuff where you have like that, you know, 70s rock, you know, vibe. It's like the... the uh, Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Vietnam, Now, yeah. Vietnam yeah, vibe, exactly. yeah. I was like, that's cool. I've never like seen that. Apocalypse now. What have you seen? <laughs> Let's start there. Better Let's question. Start there. Yeah, I've never seen it. Sorry. This is where we first start throwing grenades, though, right? Yes. yes. This is, first, this is first also, first see, another first. first. We start throwing grenades. Yeah. Guys, grenades come in very handy. Facts. I very much like the, the throwing system in this. Oh, yes. Yeah. Where it, you can bounce it off you know, walls and it shows the trajectory that is bouncing off it. So you can like do some cool bank shots. I very much liked the grenades in this. Oh, I love dude. a game where they show you the grenade trajectory. Yes. yes. Not the overarching trajectory, just not just that, but like where it's going to land after, you know, bouncing off something. Exactly. It's great. That's great. It allows you to plan out the throw perfectly. Mm-hmm. After wiping out the insurgent troop that was inside the news station, the squad walks into a different area, and we have a DJ. There is someone on the sound system. He has a little something to say to everybody. It's just in. It's just in. An unwarranted assault on the 33rd today means, <laughs> you guessed it, an end to the ceasefire. All insurgents wishing to surrender, please report to your nearest outpost for processing. <laughs> we now return to our regularly scheduled broadcast. Here we go. Let me go on record and say this shit just got weird. Fuck weird. This is out of control. So that's Jake Busey right there on the on the comms there. Oh. Yes, it is. How cool is that? It's that's very cool. Sick. What do you guys think of that whole DJ thing? I think it is kind of twisted. Right, this dude is like um, almost thinks it's like a game. You know, if you guys want to surrender, great. If not, you know, eh, well, fuck you. Right? It's, eh. <laughs> it tells you that there was a ceasefire between the yes. insurgents and the damn thirty third. Right, and you just came in when it all went to shit. That's that's the cool thing is like you're very much entering into like as a third party, being like, oh shit, like something's going on here, and it's like we're not involved. Like we're just kind of passive right now to this whole thing it's pretty cool because it kind of gives you that lived in feeling as far as there's a conflict that again you don't know what what's going on you're trying to figure this out but shit's about to go down after the dj sequence we now have to fight outside and we get to use a turret for the first time we're not fighting against one we get to run up and use it guys how did using the turret feel 
It felt great. It took me a little bit to get down there because I cleared all these guys out first. Normally, I, I would just yeah. rush out there. I'd be like, "Oh, buddy, turret, let's go a minute." But I didn't. I didn't read the fucking thing saying flip turret. I just, little, just shot these guys. You just <laughs> shot them all from up there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. dude. Just the way you die so quick in this, like the way your health just depletes so fast. There's no way, no way. I'm running out there unless I'm clearing it out. No, the game does force you to be tactical. Yes. But I was able to get my hands on that turret and just mow and, them down. And that's my... F- yeah. This is what I love about this game, too. They give you an option to crouch behind the turret and still shoot, but you cannot aim in. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot because, you know, health. Blind fire games important. with, with third-person cover shooters is definitely cool. Yes. You're just it's like, great. <laughs> After the turret section... You're next to a building, and the building is pretty run down, but guess what? There's a lot of spaces for enemies to hide, and guess what? There's a lot of enemies hiding in those spaces. <laughs> There's not a lot of cover for you where you run into. You have a concrete slab. Basically, it looks like a structure that broke. You can, you can hide behind that concrete, and then there's a steel, kind of like a steel railing that's coming out the top of a building. There's definitely some cover right there below the railing mm-hmm. as well, so you can hide right there. I'm guessing you all ran up to the concrete slab yep. first, yep. which is fine. But as the <laughs> firefight progress, <laughs> yes, they introduce another first rocket launchers. You don't get to use a rocket launcher. It's them. Blow using me it. away. <laughs> it's a great sequence because when I played this scene, I'm leaning out. I'm shooting the guys, taking them out slowly, telling my squad mates to take out other ones. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I just see in the distance a rocket just flare up and whiz right by me. Like, I see it travel all the way, and I'm leaning out, and when I'm coming back to cover, it, like, just breezed by me. Oh, damn. And I was like, whoa, that was nuts. I stayed behind the concrete slab thinking, oh, I better hide behind this just in case they fire another one. When they fire the second one, it hits the concrete slab and destroys it, yeah. leaving you right out in the wide open. That happened to me, and I was like, I need to run to where my team's at. No. I was like, oh, now they're going to show me destructible cover. Okay. <laughs> I was like, fuck <laughs> me. You have zero cover, and you have to book it over to the railing where your squad is. It slows down time a little bit, gives you a little cool slow-mo run as you go over there. Because I know you guys were both thinking, oh my god, get there, get there, get there, get there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. And then you got to hold out behind this railing. And there are tons of enemies coming at you. Yeah. Yep. It gets pretty nutty. And then in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> it got to the point where I just had to like chill behind the cover for a little bit because I was getting Facts. shot the moment yeah. I popped out of mm-hmm. cover. Yeah, it was bad. To our saving graces. Do you guys hear it? Guess what comes in? <laughs> Darude comes in. <laughs> millionaires. They're millionaires off that side. <laughs> and visibility once again becomes super poor because the sandstorm has arrived. You still got to fight for a little bit longer. And all of a sudden, the floor below you gives out. Walker starts to fall, but he grabs onto the ledge. Hang on to something. Pulls yeah, out his crazy. pistol, and you have to take out two guys who are coming up from the hill to your right. Mm-hmm. I imagine you guys both succeeded in this. Yes. After taking out those two, you fall into the abyss. But you're okay. You're all right. You land in a lobby of some sorts. There's a little piano in there. It looks really nice. It almost looks like a nice hotel area. That's not the only thing you fall into. You fall into Chapter 3. <laughs> them segues though hey they do a good <laughs> job it. turns out there's no way to exit this room that you're in i wonder why there's a locked door <laughs> devon is right in wondering that it's because you're about to get ambushed i find the locked door kind of funny because of what happens later yeah but we'll get to that in just a bit enemies start pouring in they start dropping in from where you were just fighting you have to take them all out. How was this section for you guys? 
It was great. I didn't know he hangs on. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. That, One of the guys is on the window. So, yeah, the ceiling is a window. That's what you fell through. If you shoot the window, the guy will fall. But there's also, like, rails in between the window. So the guy that was hanging out on top, I shot the window below him. <laughs> and he fell, but he grabbed on. And he was still hanging on while shooting at me. <laughs> I was like, this That's guy cool. is determined. <laughs> so then I shot him, and then he fell to his death. It was great. I loved it. It's this cool. part, this part wasn't bad. Man, the ammo management is just. Yeah, it's a good thing it's they placed hard. that AK right there behind the cover. Yeah. Convenient, <laughs> right? Convenient, but no. I mean, this wasn't that hard. They started chucking grenades, and I had to keep going yes. back. And forth. So they started yes. chucking grenades at you here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I had yet to run into them chucking grenades at me. Pete's like, oh, I, uh, I killed them before they uh, had a chance to uh, start throwing grenades. <laughs> uh, you guys experienced grenades? <laughs> you guys didn't kill them, like, instantly? <laughs> wow. It's weird. Once you clear out the room, a.k.a. once you get to the checkpoint, it tells you immediately that you reached a checkpoint. The guys think they're in the clear, but they're not really. You see boxes get thrown toward you from the roof. They're not just any little boxes. No, they're yeah. C4. <laughs> They just chucked C4 down there at you. Perfectly. This part was a little silly. Uh, perfectly like, placed. Like, perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> like, all across the entire room. <laughs> There's nowhere to hide from this C4. Why? Now, you can run through the locked door because Lugo will bust it open for you. Even though... Fairly he, easily, too. Yeah. It did not look like they put a lot of effort into that. No. Before, when you try to go to that door, Lugo... Not Lugo. Before, when you try to go to that door, Adams tells you that it's locked and he can't get through it. Once they drop the C4, Walker tells Adams, Dropping C4! Adams, door, now! Shit, Walker, this room's gonna blow! Fucking go, go, go! And you have to run through the door and Adams can suddenly just break through it with ease. He just kind of like shoulder charges the door yeah, yeah. and opens yeah. it. Right and through it. And I was it. thinking, oh, why didn't you do that when we were being shot at? Mm -hmm. Right. In the next area, we get a cutscene. Two men walk into the room that the squad is in. They hide, and the two men start talking. Dropping C4? What were you thinking? They were dug in, sir. We didn't have many options. You're lucky this whole place didn't collapse. Where's the soldier? The one we took from the plane? Downstairs, sir. Is he being guarded? At all times. Good. I think I'll go say hi. Agent custody. Wait. What? He won't talk, sir. He'll talk to me. Is that Nico Bellic, by the way? Right, uh, dude. <laughs> he looks just like him. The way that this dude talks, where's the soldier? <laughs> <laughs> he reminded me of George Woodman. <laughs> Facts. I heard his voice. I was like, dude. Mm. That dude had one tone. The yeah. entire time. Agent Castavin is his name. Yeah. One tone. Talks in one tone. What did you think of this guy when they came in? What did you think of Agent Castavin? I wanted to kill him because I already just didn't like him. Literally wanted to kill him. I was like, mm, this dude's a douche. He's very but, set up to be a traitor, right? Because, you yeah. know, you're, you're trying to save the 33rd and you have the insurgents. And this guy's obviously working for the insurgents and he's American. So you're like, what is this dude? What is this dude doing? I just wanted to kill him. But <laughs> I literally just wanted to shoot him, but no, exactly what John's saying. You're, you I, assume I, that he is obviously American and that he would be fighting with the 33rd, but since he's against them, it brings into question, okay, why though? You know? Well, I, I was already starting to question a little bit just because even um, when uh, Jake Busey was on the the horn there talking about the ceasefires over and everything you start questioning the mental state of the 33rd mm -hmm. i think you know they've obviously gone dark for months you know this guy's coming in it's like i still don't know who to trust as far as like which side is the good side i feel like he trying to do the thing I always do where I try to figure out the story before it's fucking done or without paying attention to stuff. But it's like, I feel like they set this dude up to make it look like he's the villain, which makes me think 
that he's actually not a villain <laughs> and he's a good guy and that the 33rd is the, the villain people, but we'll, we'll see. That is one thing about his appearance. He comes in and you're thinking, oh, this guy's going to have major impact. We're running into one of the bigs. Yeah. The cutscene continues. Walker, that guy was American. Yeah, I noticed. <clears throat> Why are the locals taking orders from an American? And why has he got a hard on for the 33rd? I have no idea. Shit. Ask him yourself. They're still alive. Take care of them. Shotgun him! Keep moving out! Hostile, he's down! What down? Delta Force gets spotted, and we enter in to our next firefight. I honestly didn't think that the dude that was walking with him, we were going to be able to kill him yeah. that quick. Because I shot yeah. him in the face and I said, <laughs> yeah. wow, poor guy. I'm with you, Devon. I was like, fuck, I thought he was going to be a bigger character. All right. <laughs> Damn, no man. development whatsoever. <laughs> None. You get spotted by the two men. Agent Cassivan walks away. And you're thinking that the guy that he was talking to, oh, you know, he's going to have some type of role. No. For me, Lugo popped around the corner and blasted him. <laughs> I was like, well, goodbye. <laughs> After we get to the end of the corridor, we have to go outside. Outside is a sandstorm. It's still going on. And this is the first time that we really get to fight in Darude's best-selling hit. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually really cool. I like this part. A lot. I died about three times here. <laughs> Did you? Oh, yeah. I died once in this section because I messed up so badly. And I'll tell you exactly <laughs> how. I ran out there. I killed the guy with the shotgun. And I was like, nice. Lugo's right there next to me. Let's move on through. That was not Lugo next to me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that damn. was an insurgent. And he blasted me with his AK. <laughs> oh, I was like, well, that's... The poor visibility for you <laughs> but it is a cool element it is fun you can't give orders when you're out in the sandstorm oh really and they uh, even tell that. you that beforehand what captain walker will say i can't shout orders over that storm so watch yourself so we pick our own target oh, so he's down. Got it. oh uh, yeah pick your targets for, wisely it's a free-for-all free yeah open yep. fire yeah, yeah it's not a long section but it is cool no. and it's going to give you a taste of probably things to come yeah Making our way inside, there's an elevator that we have to rappel down. Guess what's at the bottom of that elevator? Sand. Incorrect. Chapter 4. Oh. <laughs> there is sand there, though. There is sand. Uh, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. All right, thanks. thanks. <laughs> we are now inside. This environment's going to give us a taste of close quarter battles. Not as open as they were before. We were fighting mm -hmm. on rooftops, outside areas. Now we're inside. But we haven't reached a fight yet. Let's not forget why we're here in the first place. Agent Castavan has McPherson. McPherson is the one that we're going after. McPherson is the one that we want to save. That was the mm -hmm. one that the dead guy, well, the now dead guy in the airplane told us that we had to go rescue. In this building, we come across a neat little area. It's where civilians live. There's tons of candles. It looks pretty nice. So you know that's pretty run down. People are not living the way they should be but they're trying to make the best of what they got. If you walk on the candles, it puts them out. Does it? You yeah. monster. I did not know that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was very tempted to just walk all over them, see if I got an achievement, but... I'll you monster. I'm just going to keep need those. <laughs> How long it took to light those, John? <laughs> We're out of candles now, John. <laughs> God damn it. Immediately after that nice candlelit area, you turn the corner and you see a bunch of dead bodies. And these bodies were clearly lined up along this wall and executed. They're what all do you in guys think? Military garb as well. Yes. They were all soldiers. Yeah. Yes. What do you guys think of this scene? Very dark. Um, yeah. Not just them, but the mural behind them, very dark as well. Of children and their eyes are blacked out. So I was like, uh, this is already kind of fucked. 
Yes, well, just the... and there's ve- it's very ironic too because there's a little slogan on the wall with the children whose eyes are blacked out. It says security in your life. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's something it's very unexpected because, like you said, you jump down and it's like, oh, these are where the civilians lived. And then next room, just a line of dead bodies. So you're like, well, fuck, if this is where the civilians are living and everyone's executed, like, wh- again, what is going on right. in this whole situation? <laughs> so it adds to the mystery. This is also the first real taste of the dark tones that this game has. Because before you saw the soldiers being shot, which... Definitely dark. You don't want to see that. But this seeing the aftermath of what could happen in war. Yeah. Right. That's incredibly traumatizing. So coming across this scene, it's pretty much gearing you up for what's going to be a traumatic experience for everyone involved. The squad hears something in the next room over. And when you turn the corner, we get another cutscene. It's Agent Castavin and McPherson. McPherson is tied up. Castavin is beating on him. But not only beating on him, he's asking him questions. We're gonna keep at this until you tell me what I want to know. How many soldiers are stationed at the water depot? Get your licks in while you can, Agent. 33rd's on their way here right now. Damn can't save you. The 33rd lost their balls the day they went rogue. Fuck you. Dubai would be at peace if you hadn't stirred up the locals. <laughs> Got him killing soldiers again. Did you really think we weren't gonna fight back? We hoped you would. The CIA doesn't start when you can't finish. Well, now's the time to prove it, because I'm not telling you shit. Well, that, what do you guys think of that questioning portion? It's a lot, it's a lot all at once. Oh, yeah. Because, like, you're finding out that the dude's CIA, and they're stirring up the, the locals to fight against the 33rd, who also went rogue. Right. So again, it's like, but like, <laughs> so many questions, that, not enough answers. Yeah, it's like you're like, whole, oh, whole, oh, okay, like going rogue, <laughs> not good, right? All right, and then you're like, well, CIA coming in, stirring up locals and killing soldiers. It's like that's not good either. Not good either. <laughs> like we're what? on the same team. <laughs> like, I'm kind of confused. What's going on, guys? Like you actually feel like you know walker and his team you're like again what the fuck's going on you know it's right. it's it's they don't know what's happening and yeah. they're supposed to know what's happening you know because they are military and you think that they would be let in on this and it's like fuck it again just feels and quite literally in this situation like you've walked into a room where something is going on and you're like sorry i'm sorry <laughs> like yeah uh, <laughs> Okay, you guys figure it out. <laughs> I'll come uh, back. Yeah. You're right. It's looking like neither side is the good guy. Right. That's probably a theme that this game wants to stress is that there's no black and white. Yep. There's right. no just good guy, bad guy right. in war. It's all screwed up. Yeah. Right. But where is the line in war? Ah! <laughs> I like it. (laughs) After McPherson tells Cassivan, I'm not telling you shit. Cassivan's had enough. He draws his pistol and aims it at McPherson. Now, what I didn't tell you during the scene was that McPherson was shown messing around with the ropes tied around his wrist. With Cassivan aiming his weapon at McPherson, Walker speaks out, tries to stop the execution. No! What the hell? Hold your fire. This distracts Castavin just long enough for McPherson to break out through his ropes, grab Castavin's pistol, turn it on him, and shoot him in the head. Guys, Castavin is not a main character. He is dead. Facts. Yep. What did you think of that part? Some of these. Let's fucking write. Some of some of these people have never been in Boy Scouts, and it shows. (laughs) Can't even tie a fucking simple knot, dude. losers (laughs) losers <laughs> that shit took me off guard i was like oh well so much for character development for that guy <laughs> i totally gone. thought it was going to be like a back and forth like you know struggle and maybe mm-hmm. a shot missing but i was like all right that's a that's a shot to the head oh, yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna come back from that it kind of shows how crazy the 33rd are right because they know this dude's cia 
I mean, where... also he was going to get killed, so it's like, right. That's true. Where, yeah, where I he... mean, I I wouldn't say it shows how crazy they are. I mean, he shot the guy who was about to blow his head off. Yeah, it's just, you're <laughs> not wrong. I mean, he could have he could have disarmed him though, and just. Beat I'll say ass. this next part is more telling than yeah. than that part. Facts. Yeah, McPherson sees Walker, Adams, and Lugo. Turns his pistol on them. So now we're aiming our weapon directly at him. And there's a little back and forth in the conversation here. Lower your weapon. I look stupid to you? No. That's why you're going to point that pistol somewhere else. Lower your weapon. I'll lower mine. Not going to happen. You got a name? McPherson. First Lieutenant. You? Walker. Captain. We found your friend at the plane. He told us where to find you. Really? Where's he at? He didn't make it. Why am I not surprised? So what? You think we killed him? I didn't say that. You're not saying much of anything, Lieutenant. Article 4, Captain. You gotta speak to my commander. Well, where's he at? By now, I'd imagine he's just downstairs. Yeah, I'll bet. Why don't you wait here? I'll go get him. All of us have the option to shoot McPherson. Really? Yeah, you can. You got the reticle on him. You can pull the trigger. Didn't, did not do it. Did anybody do it? No. No. Peter, did you do it? I did not. I did not. Oh man, I how part of me really wanted to, and oh, man, now I kind of want to like go back and just like see what it will change after playing through the game. The big thing during this conversation is McPherson obviously doesn't trust Delta Force. Right. Uh, right. McPherson gives bullshit answers and then starts slowly walking over to the rope. Once the conversation comes to an end, McPherson grabs the rope repels down and you lose him here's my thing and why i don't understand because this is where i noticed it okay i noticed playing this that this whole time he's talking to this person that's part of 33rd why the hell doesn't he ask him about conrad like right then and there like hey by the way we're looking for this dude nothing comes up he doesn't even mention it He's I think just like, there's some shit going down, and it's like... Yeah, but he's they're trying, definitely to... trying to find Conrad, but it's like, also, what the fuck is going on? He also just saw a CIA agent get his head blown off by one of the 33rd. And he also had a gun pointed at them. <laughs> he's not thinking so, clearly. Yeah. Hmm. Clearly, he's not thinking. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Could you target him with your squad thing to have one of them shoot him? Ooh, I wonder. I don't believe so. That's bullshit. Because you couldn't move while you were aiming at him or anything like that. It was just the gun was up and you had the reticule. I'm pretty sure you could pull the trigger, though. Do you remember what you did the first time, Pete? Did you kill him or did you No, I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. And there's something that Captain Walker says. (laughs) I'm I'm not a white hat. Captain Walker, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Captain Walker says something that I that I do agree with, where he he says, "You let him go. Why? I'm not about to shoot a U.S. soldier, Luca. Plus, we can follow him back to the 33rd." Yeah, wait five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Not lying. <laughs> the guy didn't shoot at me though, so there's no reason yeah. for me to shoot at him. That was good. The squad repels down. After the squad repels to the bottom, we are now in what looks like the CIA den. You the can den see, of wolves. <laughs> you can see the maps and pictures, and you can tell that this is where Cassavin was doing his investigation. Kind of sucks I hate to repel down every single time that he wanted to go <laughs> back down there, though. It didn't seem like a very easily accessible hideout. Mm. But Maybe that, that's how that they what want. You it. want in a hideout, right? No one can really get to you. I don't know, but I, I feel like you need to be able to get to it easily. <laughs> God damn! All this stuff is CIA. This must have been their safe house. Hiding behind civilians, not the manliest of tactics. That's normal for the CIA. Yeah, but killing U.S. soldiers isn't. What Lugo said right there made absolute sense of this. Well, not sense of the story, but it. Hints like it gives you an inkling that something's not right. Absolutely, there's definitely like, a lot going on. Hiding behind civilians, yes, killing that was cool Americans. That point that out. All right, said hiding behind civilians. That's normal for the CIA, but killing soldiers isn't. So it's like, all right, 
so what does the CIA know about the 33rd? Or what is the 33rd doing that the CIA doesn't like and that warrants enough to kill them? Mm-hmm. Not just like, kill them, it's to fuel the civilians. To fuel enough the to kill them. Yeah. Right. To kill them, to break the ceasefire. Right. Well, it looks like we're not going to get our answers from McPherson because we hear them talking in the distance. Look, I don't know their names, but they're CIA. Who else could they be? You know our orders. There they are. Take them out. Oh, there they are. Get in the open. Take the shot. McPherson and a group of the 33rd come out, guns blazing, ready to kill you. Was that McPherson? Yeah. I didn't realize that. I didn't, I didn't realize, realize that. that either. Get blasted, homie. <laughs> <laughs> every, every important person's dying. In this <laughs> <laughs> That's <hilarious>. Gone. <laughs> yeah, McPherson got wrecked. The oh. first time I played this, and what I mean by the first time is that I had to play this section twice because <laughs> I totally forgot to record the section. I streamed it, but I forgot to record it. So I had to play through it again to record it for this podcast. But... The first time I played it, they shot at me. The second time, the moment McPherson turned that corner, I blasted. <laughs> the hell out of nah, man, you're not even getting a shot off. That's hilarious. I had no idea that was him. Guys, we just killed U.S. soldiers. Mm. What did that? What did that feel like? How did that make you feel? It wasn't so bad here because you already got a glimpse of McPherson. I think a. The the very very small amount of time that you had him, he seems a little little kooky, flighty, little little uh, shady. Uh, yeah, like something's something's up with him. Um, so I just figured he was part of these people. I didn't realize that was McPherson. The next set, I feel like we're very at- detached from what just happened. Mm-hmm. So the fact that we start killing these guys, I was like. They don't even know what's going on. <laughs> like, uh, it's a little weird. That's exactly well, right. And let me explain what John means by that. There's a door in the room where we just killed those U.S. soldiers. When you walk on through it, you see civilians running away from U.S. soldiers. Get back here! Stop running! This is for your own good! What? The 33rd is chasing down up. civilians. Attack! Shit! Return oh, fire! Shit. But they're soldiers! Oh, they will kill us if we don't! Now open fire! We are now just firing on the damn 33rd. The U.S. soldiers mm-hmm. are just now enemies. And these guys in this section were never even a part of what just happened before. Right. So Ooh. now it's just the worst case of friendly fire ever. Mm-hmm. I think what I like about this is you get to really see the characters fleshed out because both Lugo and Adams do not care for this at all. Yeah. Like at all. They're like, no dude, like they're soldiers. Like, yeah, regardless. Okay. Yeah. They're going to shoot at us. But Walker's like, like, no, I feel like he's a little detached from it at this point too. Cause he's well, like, he, he doesn't like it either, but right. he's like, if they're firing at us, then right. Then you have to, have just to do fire what back. You have to do. Right. Yep. Right. Whereas the other two are like, they're just unsure of what to do and they're yeah. just not quick thinking. But this is the part where I was touching on earlier where I actually executed some of the, the guys here, uh, the military dudes. The way I justified it was like, they didn't know what was going on really and they were suffering and I was just putting them out of their misery. Right. Like, I didn't want them to fucking oh, sit there with, like, you know, like bullet holes in them. And I was like, in my head, I was just like, yeah, I don't want them to, to like suffer type of thing. And then you do stuff like that where you step on his fucking <laughs> neck. But like, <laughs> it was like, suffer. You know, we're, we're, when it was the insurgents, I was like, no, fuck these guys. I'm executing them. And then it was like, ah, oh, fuck. I don't want to see this soldier dude like squirming for his fucking life. And I was like, all right, dude, like, I'll, I'll end it for you. It was, I I I noticed that after, and I was like, "Damn, I've never had a game do that where it like I, without any prompt from the game, in my own mind, justified what I was doing. It was weird. It was a weird it's- feeling." <laughs> At the same time, I want to pose something for you. You're fighting the insurgents, right? And yep. you're killing them, and it's like, "Oh, got to kill the insurgents." Mm-hmm. Whatever. You don't really feel anything about that. 
In all honesty, you don't. When you start killing the U.S. soldiers, at the start of it, you're like, it's friendly fire. We shouldn't even right. be fighting. But by, by the three? end, by the end, <laughs> yeah. by the end of this chapter, I'm pretty sure none of you guys had a problem. Just it nope. was like, well, nope. All your do- all of you are going down. You're the no. enemy. You're the I enemy I never executed a U.S. soldier. I just shot them if they were squirming on the ground. Hmm. I didn't execute them at all. I just walked up to them, just pop, kept moving. It's uh, cold, man. That's cold. Uh, I think I was. I think I was even colder. I like ran up and I was like, "Ammo cash." Bah! <laughs> <laughs> he just watches them squirm until they die. <laughs> He's just choking them. Give me your ammo. <laughs> One thing that annoyed me, and this has nothing to do with anything else, but in the cutscenes, Captain Walker has an M4. Oh. But if you don't have an M4. At the end of the cutscene, he'll switch out the weapon to whatever weapon you actually have, whether it's an AK, grenade launcher, shotgun. Really? Kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. Thank you for that. Now yeah. I will just focus on that every time. <laughs> appreciate it. That's such a small detail, but it is something that I do appreciate when games do, right? Just keep something as simple as like uh, something that you changed into clothing wise. They keep in like the cutscene. Like Spider Man was, a, was a, a big one for that. Like whatever. Whatever uniform costume you were wearing, those cutscenes had that. So it's like, yep. it's it's a minor thing, but it you know in your case you noticed that I didn't in this, yeah. but um yeah I do. But now you will. Details <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You have to fight the U.S. soldiers through a marketplace. Once you reach the end of it, Adams opens up the door for you. All right. We need to keep moving before more soldiers show up. You mean more American soldiers? Rogue soldiers. It's clear the 33rd is no longer acting as part of the U.S. Army. So what do we do? If we're going to sort this out, we need to find John Conrad. How's that help? You just said the 33rd were rogue. Conrad wouldn't abandon his duty. The 33rd may be hostile, but I guarantee the Colonel isn't part of it. How can you be sure? Because I know the man. Now get that open. Not a problem. Through the door, we now enter what looks like... Uh, how would you guys describe this building? It could be like a mall. Right. I was thinking I a guess, mall. Like, Either some like type a of mall, mall, maybe a business building or something right, like that. Right. A business, that. like a center for like business or something like that. Like exactly. a lobby. But pretty much it's a huge open building with stairs on the side that allow you to go down. There's tons of floors, but the front of the building is completely open and you can see down and look at all the different stories of the building. When they get to the edge of their floor and they look down, they see civilians are being rounded up. They're being herded toward another location. Why? Shit. We're going to kill them all. Can't let that happen. Why? I'm going to. Let's hurry up and get down. Follow me. We hear our good old friend Jake Busey on the intercom. I know there's a lot of you asking the same question right now. Why? Well, I'd like to ask you. There was no reason for any of this. We made a truce. You broke it. We gave you a chance to surrender, and you ignored it. Why? Why? I mean, why would you do that? You chose this, not us. The only piece I can offer you now is this. Perfect team play you off. Damn it, I'm out. And then the firefight ensues. We are now going to kill a, a bunch more U.S. <laughs> soldiers in this room. And it's a fight. You come yeah. across a grenade launcher. There's turrets. There's tons of soldiers popping out from different corners, from different levels of the building. Guys, how did this section work out for you? I died a lot. This is the most difficult section for me. I died, I think I, it was like three times in this area. Like, throughout this whole entire portion of the the section i will say i'll just add to that i did die once in this section so in the total of the playthrough i died twice the reason i died in this section so before i totally thought an insurgent was lugo this time i cleared out a floor and i could hear gunshots but i thought the guy was on a different floor so when i walked down the stairs and turned the corner he actually happened to be right there behind the corner oh. and just blew me away and i couldn't retreat fast enough so that's one section uh, past us where like two guys hopped this wall and just right in front of me and i couldn't go anywhere and they just like ended me so quick 
I was like, fuck. All right. And then th- this section, I had a real tough time with uh, ammo. I actually ran out of ammo on both guns that I had, and there was no guns to pick up. And I was just hiding behind a wall and just directing the guys to try to like kill <laughs> enemies one by one. <laughs> but then they would get shot, and like one would go down. And I would like heal him, like heal him, heal him. And then like he'd pick the guy up. I'd try to like have him target a person, and then the other guy would go down. And I'd be like heal him, heal him. <laughs> and then it was just like this long drawn out thing, and I died. So when I respawned, I had zero ammo right from the start. And I had to like try to do the same thing. And I just ended up pushing forward till I picked up somebody's gun. I think it was like a shotgun. It was a little difficult. Not too bad. I kept thinking like if this was on a higher difficulty, this would be insane. Oh, yeah. It'd be nuts to play. Yeah, dude. I can't even imagine this. The highest difficulty of this game is called Fubar. Yeah. And I don't ever want to see what that's like. No. No. One bullet gone. You'd be doing a lot of just hiding behind walls, which is not fun. No. Exactly. The grenade launcher came in very handy. In yes, it did. It came in very clutch. Wish I knew that there is the grenade launcher attachment on things. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You can actually pick up a grenade launcher. Yeah. Oh. It's... Wish I knew there was a grenade launcher you could pick up. <laughs> <laughs> well, right where you kill the grenade launcher guy, because there's yeah. a guy shooting a grenade launcher at you, after you kill him, when you walk by the platform that he was on, there's a grenade launcher right there. You're speaking a lot of logic there, Pete, and I just did not do that. <laughs> it was also really fun when you shot that thing in the middle of a group of enemies, and you just saw them all just <laughs> oh yeah, out it was like conf- it was like confetti. Was <laughs> There's good some stuff. good dying effects on these guys. Oh yeah, get dude, get a grenade or a grenade launcher right on an enemy; they are deleted from existence. <laughs> no lie. Even just the. They're running and you shoot them and they just like go limp as they're oh, yeah. still moving forward. Like it, it looks looks cool. When you make it down a few floors across the way on the other side of the open area, a turret starts shooting at you and your squad. What do you have to do in this situation? You have to flank it. You detach from your squad and you have to run through a little marketplace around the corner in this area. A civilian pops up. Did you guys shoot her? No. no. Nice job, guys. These were the guys fucking moment. hopped the wall, though, and fucked me up. <laughs> oh, dude. The f- I killed both of them the first time pretty easily, but the second uh-huh. time, oh, they never stood a chance. Yeah. Like, I ran <laughs> right up there, and, like, I couldn't jump over it because they were jumping over, and then just fucking ended <laughs> me. I was like, God damn. You take out those two guys. You vault over the little obstacle. And then you can wipe out the three enemies that are shooting at your squad. One of them is on the turret with them off. Now you can take that turret and you have to hold out for a little bit. You have to shoot all these enemies coming in from different areas. They're coming out from the bottom floor, from the top floor, from the same floor that you on, but from the opposite side of the building. There's a sniper that comes in at some point too, if you take too long. What you have to do is you have to use your turret to shoot the window behind the other turret nest it's pretty much the giant window in the building you can't miss it and you can see how much sand there is behind it so once you get that thing open it's gonna completely flood the area how did this section work out for you guys pretty standard pretty easy i actually died because when i came around the corner this is where i actually died twice here this is where i ran around the corner and i meleeed i was like i had no ammo i was like i'm gonna melee them so i meleeed two of them and didn't see the third person so i hopped on the turret and i'm shooting and he's just re- just <laughs> filled me dude just <laughs> filled me up dude and then the second time i i just kept getting shot and didn't crouch and was like no i can do this ah kept shooting the glass and nope you died and i was like oh well that's great i kept so, lighting the glass up and in the spot that had the target and i think you had to damage all three panes you have to, da- to yes explode. you have to damage all three panes and i would dude i was lighting up the middle window and i was like <laughs> why the fuck isn't it not breaking right now and then i ended up uh dispersing between the three and it worked i was like oh thank god with that sequence done we enter a cutscene. they walk out onto the sand suddenly civilians start showing up is that all of them 
think we're clear. What about the civilians? 33rd get away with that, Abel? Yeah, they did. We need a translator to know they're hurt. What are they saying now? These people want us gone. We should get out of here and leave these people to grieve. Yeah, I think that's the least we can do. Come on. What do you guys think of that? It's good. Fuck yeah. Goddamn American soldiers not paying attention. <laughs> Goddamn Delta Force, baby. I want to see more sand interaction. Right. It's been sparsely put in, and that's fine. I, I don't want it to become like too gimmicky, but it would be kind of cool to have some like, even if it's just one, like a little puzzle element of something like that, where like you break the window to get to the sand to come down to get to a certain spot. Because I keep forgetting about the the sand and the windows. Honestly, like I I like the fact that they almost telegraphed the window portion for you. I, I wish they didn't target it, honestly, because the way that whole last portion set up is you're shooting at the sniper nest or not the sniper nest, but the turret nest just by happenstance because of the angle you, you're hitting the glass and you see it start right. to like spider web and crack. And I was like, Oh damn, cool. I was like, I got to shoot the glass. And then it targeted it. And I was like, okay. Right. Yeah. I get there's people that are like, Oh, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? But it, it would have been cooler if it just left natu it naturally got there. Let with, me figure it out. Yeah. Right. And I was like, ah, oh. but yeah, just stuff like that would have been cool. Well, boys, we have just one more scene. And that is the group walking through sand some more. Walker's acting a little quiet. You okay, Walker? You're awfully quiet. Just thinking about our next move. Want to share your thoughts with the rest of us? Well, from what we've heard, I'm starting to think the 33rd went to war against itself. Whichever side won, seems they decided to stay here and take over Dubai. Sounds like a mess. It is. The CIA's been here for God knows how long trying to clean it up. Long enough to know everything that's going on in the city. Including what happened to Conrad? Exactly. We can make contact with the CIA, then we'll find Conrad. Oh my god. What's wrong? I'm, uh, I'm picking up something. You guys need to hear it. Pass it through. What is your name and designation? Agent Daniel, CIA. Good. Why did you and your men come to Dubai and attend? We're looking for survivors. Okay. Looks like he's telling the truth. We can begin. That's enough, Luca. Yes, sir. Can you trace the signal's origin? I already did. It's coming from over there. Is Lugo the comms? Like, he's the comms, so any transmission, he's just locked into it? Because I found it weird that he was the only one getting the transmissions. I would feel like it would go through all of them. but I guess I mean, he has like... his radio open to pick up anything, and he'll yeah. let the other guys know. Okay. It is kind of weird, but at the same time, yeah. if you do have your channel open, you can right. definitely yeah. listen in on other, or other people can listen in on you. I find it weird that he already traced that transmission. He didn't even do anything. So right. automatically knew where, he just knew where it was to coming go. from. <laughs> well, dude, he knew exactly where it was coming from. He, he got it pinged off of a satellite. <laughs> There's one agent still alive, at least one, Lieutenant Daniels, and that is our mission. We have to go rescue Lieutenant Daniels so we can figure out everything that happened. We drop down into this crack. Walk out to the edge of this building. We get a landscape shot of Dubai, and we hit Chapter 5, as well as the end of this first section. Boom, baby! <laughs> Season 3, baby, we here! <laughs> Guys, what did you think? A lot of questions about what's going on here in the old Spec Ops but it's also going quick, if you think about it. it. Is. That, how long, that was how long did this section complaint. take, you guys? It was like an hour, a little over. I think I played it literally in 45 minutes. Cruise Probably 50 it. minutes. You yeah. cruise through it, Dan. Blowing through it, dude. <laughs> That's kind of my complaint, is I feel like this could be drawn out a little bit more. Like, right. they're, they're hitting it at, like, breakneck speed. It's like, boom, 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 boom. Which is not terrible, because... I feel like a lot's happened already, but we're only an hour into the game. Yep. <laughs> essentially, it's like, all right, you could let this breathe a little bit, especially, you know, I mean, I, granted, there's, there's obviously more that that's going to happen, but 
I don't know. A lot happened in that one that one section. A lot. Absolutely. I don't need like a you know forty hour story single, single player story here, but I, I definitely could have. Uh, and I don't even know how they could have filled it, right? Because then I guess my complaint would have been like, oh, we just have corridors of people that were shooting, so. I'm probably just going to find something annoying about it either way. <laughs> yeah, but. it's a tough balance in order yeah. to find the right pacing. I don't think that they're doing the pacing wrong, but yeah, this definitely is not a long game, and you can already tell that from no. the start of it. The way you're blowing through fine. chapters. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. There's a place in you know gaming for that. I'm, Especially I'm not if you have a narrative it, experience, just... a narrative-focused experience, mm-hmm. you don't need to drag out your gameplay right. sections. In all right, honesty, right. it's probably going to hurt your story if you do that. Yeah, I just, I, it just felt very rushed. I was like, wow, this is a lot of shit happening all, all at once. I enjoyed it. I, I liked it. Uh, gameplay wise, like I said, it's very standard. It doesn't do anything crazy. It's a straightforward third person shooter. Um, I think it's more focused on the, the story elements. They're doing the, the mystery stuff pretty well. It's very much breadcrumbing things along you're getting little tidbits that are giving some story element elements away to to what's happening so that's cool i'm looking forward to continuing to play same i'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about future events in the game this is definitely a thrill ride there's definitely a lot of action to be had i am enjoying going through this again i do have to say in the perspective of the game club I like that we're diving into something much more action focused and fast paced. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We've had the stealth gameplay. Mm-hmm. We've had the open world, slow, mysterious gameplay. Now we're just in action movie mode. Yeah. And it feels good. It's a nice yeah. little break from what it's we've like done. It's like a palate cleanser, you know? Exactly. Right. Just... Exactly. I like it. There's good things to come. And guess what? What's that? Our audience can join us as we live through these good things. Hey. Let's talk about what section we're playing through next and what section you can play to as well. We are going to play to the end of Chapter 8. So keep on playing until you see Chapter 9 pop up. Once Chapter 9 pops up, cut the game off. You're not allowed to play any further. I know you're going to want to. But (laughs) don't. Don't for at least one week. (laughs) If you want to play, you can as well. And you heard us say it here. It won't take you long to get to where we are. If you do decide to play with us, join our Discord. You can do so by clicking the link in the YouTube description below or in the description of the listening platform you are currently using. Join our Discord. Talk to us about the game. Leave your feedback. Leave your questions. We have a text channel in there that you can say anything you want about the game let us know about your experience what you're thinking what you're feeling what you want us to talk about and we will bring it up we'll give you a little shout out it'll be a great time and we'll help you finish games that's another thing we're going to help you finish a video game (laughs) we're helping devon finish video games (laughs) but i understand a lot of us are busy some of us don't have the time to boot up a new game and play through it what could they do, John, if they can't play the game themselves? Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Well, if you don't want to play it, you can watch one of us play it by following us on our Twitch channel, BLKWHT Gaming. You can go there, follow us. One of us will play through the section that we are currently going to be going through. Uh, if you don't catch us when we're going live, you can watch the video on demand. And you can uh, see our, our current reaction to it. And then you can talk to us while we play. We'll, we'll do the work for you. You know, we're, we're that selfless. Well, we will do that for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm going to add a little thing to that. You can also find our Twitch streams on YouTube now. Earlier, I mentioned listening platform. Hmm. Devon, tell them a little mm. bit about the listening platforms they can use. Guys, listen. Favorite listening platform, whatever you got, whether it's Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, we're there. Black and White Gaming Game Club is on there for your listening pleasure, whether you're taking a long car ride, whether you got a few minutes to kill for lunch break, 
whatever you're doing, we're there. Come down to your favorite listening platform and listen and enjoy. There's no excuse not to be there because literally we are on everything. We are there. When you are there, like it, follow it, leave a rating, do something, help us out. We're here for you and your entertainment. That's where you guys can go. Any one of those listening platforms, just join us there. Come have fun because we're having fun. You can continue the fun on social media by following us on Twitter or Instagram, BLKWHD Gaming, same as our Twitch channel. And if you want to reach out to us in a more private sense, feel free to email us at blkwhdgaming at gmail.com. That is it for the first episode of season three. We're here. We did it. We're excited to continue. Guys, are you ready to cross the line? Of specs? Bitch, I've been over the land the whole time. <laughs> You're ghosting this motherfucker. <laughs> yes, I'm ready to cross it, dude. Yeah, I'm down. We're doing it. We're doing it. We hope to see you for episode two. I'm Peter with my friends, Johnny Bag of Donuts. Hey. Hey. And the light-skinned Sergeant Adams. Oh, uh, we have ascended. <laughs> hey, we went from fucking dark skin Separaya, <laughs> light skin. Adam. And for uh, Peter, Mr. Showbiz, oi, uh, we are Black and White Gaming, and we will catch you guys on Live 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 Live.